Hey there, Mr. Redder here. Welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled People Stories. Our first story we'll be reading today. My sister's kids destroyed my apartment. I finally gave her a piece of my mind. After that, am I the jerk for telling my sister that she should have gone to college if she wanted a life like mine? And after that, am I the jerk for letting my son have a lock on his door so his cousins can't just barge in whenever they want to? Not for every thumbs up this video gets, one Karen doesn't get to go to college. Your mom goes to college? So please smash that like button and subscribe and turn on notifications for new stories from Reddit every single day. My sister's kids destroyed my apartment. I finally gave her a piece of my mind. I, 23 female, live on my own. I'm single and never plan on getting married or having any kids. My sister, Rose, who's 29, is married and has two kids, twins, Ava and Zoe, who are eight. I'll be the first to say that her kids are brats. They're nothing but spoiled and expect everyone to drop everything to help them. Rose and her husband, James, have no self-control, and when their kids throw a tantrum, they'll immediately be given whatever it is they want. To see two eight-year-olds boss around their parents is nothing but sad and pathetic. Since they're the only kids in the family, everyone practically worships them and never sees how bad they really are. It was my birthday recently, and I invited everyone over to my apartment to celebrate. When planning it, I mentioned that I was inviting a few of my friends too, and since there would be alcohol, I would feel more comfortable with it being a child-free event. Everyone agreed. Well, on the evening, she had to turn up late and with the kids. I told her to leave and come back when she found someone to look after them, but James and my parents both told me I was being too serious and that it was a party for all of us to enjoy. They didn't even care that it was my birthday or my apartment or my rules. In the 30 minutes Ava and Zoe were there, they smashed a plate, put their handprints all over my glass windows, got hurt after they opened the oven after I explicitly told them not to, and they threw a tantrum because I didn't have pretzels and refused to leave my own party to walk to the shops and buy some. The final straw was when they picked up a glass of wine somebody had left on the counter and they took it into my room, where they promptly spilt red wine all over my white sheets. I pulled James and Rose into my room and told them they need to leave right now before I made them pay for all of the damages. Rose told me that they were just kids and didn't mean to. I told her it was her fault for the way her kids turned out and that she raised them to be spoiled brats. She called me a selfish jerk before grabbing her kids and they all walked out. I haven't spoken to her or James since then and while my parents think she shouldn't have said that, they told me it's still my fault for not planning a party that accommodated for her kids. I don't think I should have to change my own lifestyle to support her own choices and I think I'm the one who's owed money for the damages and an apology. So am I the jerk? Not the jerk. They're just kids. Yeah, kids you haven't taught to behave and respect other people's property and I want them around about as much as a dog who's not housebroken. Not the jerk, but make them pay for the damage anyway. It sounds like they're not just the kids, but the parents that need consequences or they'll never learn. Am I the jerk for telling my sister that she should have gone to college if she wanted a life like mine? Hello everyone, please excuse my grammar, English is my fourth language and 100% self-taught. My sister and I are twins, we're both 33. We come from a culture where arranged marriages are an option, we're not in India though. Mostly they are blind dates set by a matchmaker, and if you are compatible, you get married. When we both graduated high school, my sister, who was valedictorian by the way, chose not to attend college. She asked for an arranged marriage since all she really wanted was to be a wife and a mother. Nothing wrong with that. My parents, who are a love match, tried to convince her to at least get her bachelor's, but she refused. I, on the other hand, started attending an engineering college, computer engineering. A year later, she married a man that she met through the matchmaker. He is a very nice man, a teacher, and he treats my sister like a queen. The thing is, he was just a freshly hired teacher. My sister went from living in a double income house with parents being both high earners, a doctor and a lawyer, to a single income house on a teacher's salary. I graduated at 23, started working as a cybersecurity personnel for a big bank. After two years of dating around, I too asked for an arranged marriage. My husband is a business owner, real estate developer, and he makes a lot more than I do. He also comes from money. My sister didn't like him from the get-go. She even threw a tantrum, thankfully in private, at my wedding. Apparently, the bride gifts he bought were tacky, more like very expensive, more than what her husband could get her. The problem is that my first kid is now at the age where she will be starting preschool. We signed her up for a private school. 
The monthly tuition is more than what her husband makes. When she heard this, she just exploded. She was ranting about how it's not fair that our kids will not have equal opportunities, how the only reason I could live like I do was that my parents chose a better husband for me. I became angry for how she treats me, how unfair she was to her husband and to my parents, so I laid the truth out on her. I told her I got matched with a better husband because I'm college educated with a respectable job and that wealthy men using matchmakers don't want a 19-year-old high school graduate. Their standards are higher. I told her that her husband is a wonderful man who loves her, but if all she wanted was a wealthy man, she should have gone to college. Now she has no contact with me. She says that I'm the jerk. So, am I the jerk? Not the jerk. She's jealous and envious of your life because you decided to go through college and become successful. Also, how horrible she is to be talking about someone she presumably loves. Sounds like she was only marrying for the money, not for love. You told her point blank what it is. If she wanted a wealthy husband, she should have gone to college. Her decisions and choices are the reason why her life is the way it is. Also, it's her fault that her kids won't have the same opportunities as yours. OP. Also to add, they own their home. Her kids go to private school too. He got her her own car and they travel too. It's not the same as what my husband and I can afford, but it sure is great and the dream life for a lot of people. If her kids go to private school too, then what is she complaining about? There must be something else going on. Maybe it's the twins thing. Maybe it's because everything was the same and equal for you two while you were growing up and she's having a hard time accepting the fact that that's not going to continue into adulthood once you start living your own separate lives. I don't know, I'm just speculating here. OP. The difference is that her kids go to a normal private school, think a school in a better district for people from the US, while mine will be going to the uniform wearing school where kids from very rich or well-connected families go. Not the jerk. She's so jelly, you could call her smuckers. Everyone sucks here. She is clearly envious, but you clearly like to throw in extra details to make sure people know how great you are. Some examples. English is your fourth language and 100% self-taught. Apparently, the bride gifts he brought were tacky, more like very expensive, more than what her husband could have gotten her. The monthly tuition is more than what her husband makes. I can already tell when you talk about your life with her, you are giving her the business and making sure she knows how much better things are turning out for you in a very condescending way. Oh, sister, if you had just been like me and done this and that, she probably should go no contact with you for her own mental health. Yeah, you get the vibe OP reminds her sister how much better she is doing than her. English is your fourth language and 100% self-taught? Yeah, that was enough for me to stop reading. OP sounds like the jerk. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or her sister? Please let us know. Sometimes I get the feeling that some of the commenters on those stories are kind of bitter and I don't know, maybe I'm just, I don't know. Am I the jerk for letting my son have a lock on his door so his cousins can't barge in whenever they want to? I, 30, female, and my husband, 32, male, have a 10-year-old son who is an only child. My older sister, her husband, and three kids, who are 12, 7, and 5, all live down the street, so they're around a lot. This bothers my son as he's a quiet kid who likes his own space and they always swarm to his room to play when they come around and it's upsetting especially as there have been a few toy breakages in the past. After talking it over with my husband, we installed a lock on his door and told him that he can use it to keep out anyone that he doesn't want in his room as he's old enough for privacy, though we explained we had a copy of the key too for emergencies. My sister and her kids came around the other day for lunch. This was the first time since the lock had been installed. Of course, the kids swarmed towards his room only to find that the door was locked. At first, they thought it was stuck and came to tell me and I told them that no, it was locked and it was up to my son if he wanted to let them in or not. This upset my 12-year-old nephew who wanted to play with my son's PS5, so he began to try to get me to make my son share. I told him no, I wasn't going to force the issue, but if he wanted to play video games after lunch, then he could use my Switch that was hooked up to the TV in the living room. My sister was annoyed at me over this and told me that a 10-year-old didn't need that kind of privacy and I was just training him to be rude and inconsiderate. Bringing up how her 12-year-old didn't have a lock on his door, so why would a 10-year-old need one? I wasn't going to point out in front of her kids that they were the reason he needed the lock in the first place, so just said that it was something my husband and I felt was appropriate and that our son was ready for it. She then began to apply pressure to my son trying to convince him that he wanted his cousins to come play in his room as they were so bored and wouldn't it be fun? My son isn't good at confrontation. As I said, he's a quiet kid. 
and he was clearly feeling uncomfortable, so I told my sister to lay off. And if her kids needed to play so much, there was no reason to hang around after lunch as it wasn't fair to make them sit in their board. My sister did eventually leave in a huff, but has been telling our parents how rude I've been and how I'm teaching my son to be inconsiderate too and how I'm not teaching him to share. When we go to their place, he always asks before touching anything that belongs to his cousins and I've expressed in the past how they should return that consideration, but it's always ignored. Our parents are taking my sister's side stating that families share things and besides having his cousins around to play will help my son become less shy and how he doesn't need privacy at that age. My husband is on my side and has suggested my sister and her kids not come around for a while which honestly I'm leaning towards. Is it really that weird to give a 10 year old privacy and the ability to decide who comes into his room? Not the jerk. As someone who grew up with very little privacy, thank you. You're doing right for your kid. OP. I grew up sharing a room with my sister, so I knew at his age I'd have loved something like this. Maybe this is some carryover from that. All up in your business, tattling to mom and dad when she doesn't get what she wants, you're doing alright. Next time OP's sister comes over, tell her you want to use her phone, and if she asks why or doesn't want to give it to you, ask her why she's never learned to share. Forcing kids to share is BS. Not the jerk. I don't think her brat wants to play with his cousin. He just wants to play on his PS5. Also, everyone needs privacy. Sadly, I used to be like this kid. Not a day goes by that I don't regret how I treated some of my friends. Hopefully, that kid will mature. Am I the jerk for refusing to go to my daughter's graduation ceremony? I, 40 female, have a daughter, 18 female, who I'll call B. When she was younger, her father, we broke up before she was born, was very involved in her life and was admittedly a dad's girl. But this all changed when she turned eight and he got married. He barely called and just abandoned her for his new family. This was obviously hard on her and she rebelled a lot, but she went to therapy and seemed good. B has not seen him since she was 12 and he speaks to her maybe three times a year maximum. When he calls, she believes he is now back in her life for good, then he ghosts her for the remainder of the year. This being said, B and I have a great relationship. We do everything together. She even refers to me as her best friend, so I'd say we have a good relationship. Recently was her graduation and I was excited, but then she came to me a week before and told me she's going to invite her dad and his son. And because her dad doesn't want to see me, I can't be there. B told me that this was the only way he was going to go. I angrily told her that I felt betrayed and won't forgive her for this. She just told me I have been there for many of her milestones and she wants her father to experience some too. Things got heated and we argued. The night before her graduation, I pleaded with her, but she ignored me when I spoke and only said, I'm sorry, but I'm not changing my mind. I left and cried until my sister offered to take me out during the graduation to take my mind off of it and I agreed. I woke up the next morning to my daughter bawling her eyes out. I looked at the time and realized that the ceremony starts in five minutes. I asked B why she hasn't left yet. B then tells me her father ditched her and isn't answering anymore. I hug her and tell her to make the most of her graduation. She looked shocked and asks if I'm not going to the ceremony now that her father isn't anymore and how it'll be embarrassing to be the only one there without parents. I told her I'm sorry that I already had plans. She then screamed and called me a bad mom. I apologized once again and got ready to go meet my sister. I chose not to go because I felt betrayed and wanted to teach her that actions have consequences even if it broke me that I didn't go. Since B returned, she hasn't spoken a word to me, and she looks depressed and like she's been crying for ages. I'm starting to regret not going. My sister says I did the right thing, but one of the moms at my daughter's school said she was depressed at graduation, and now I feel bad that I ruined what was supposed to be a day to remember because I wanted to teach my daughter a lesson. So, am I the jerk? Update. I don't think I'm a bad mom for this one thing, and I accept the judgments and read everything. To answer your questions, does B go to therapy? Yes. This isn't the first time B has ditched me for her dad. She's been doing it for 10 years. This is the first time I've said no to her after her father abandoned her. I have asked her therapist if B is being manipulated and she said no based on B and her father's messages and my daughter is just grasping onto a reality that isn't there. Update. I went to my daughter and apologized for not going to her graduation. I also explained that it's not a nice feeling to be left out and I feel underappreciated. Also, that it's fine to want her father there for her, but I should too. 
B told me that she's sorry things ended this way and that she loves me, gave me a hug, and wanted things to be back to normal, and that she acted like a jerk. I told her, nevertheless, I should have been there, and if I could do this all over again, I would have gone. Honestly, I said this as I thought she now knew her dad can't be trusted and I felt for her. Then I asked her if she regrets uninviting me in the first place and surprisingly, she said no. This hurt me, but I figured it was because I didn't go, so it was understandable. But no, she continued saying that it was probably best I didn't go because she would have been more miserable as she would have preferred her dad to be there anyway. Then I got upset. I didn't show it. I told her my feelings were hurt, especially since I've been there for her and she said that she's always going to want her dad there for her big moments. I asked, even at the expense of me, and knowing he most likely won't show, and she replied, I mean, if I have to make sacrifices, I'm going to, to have my dad there. I repeated the question as she seemed to be swerving it, but she just shrugged and went on her phone. I told her not to expect everyone to apologize and turn a blind eye when she doesn't value them in the real world, and I also said, knowing how she feels, don't expect another apology from me, and this is the last time I'm doing this. She looked teary-eyed, but I left. I don't know how other parents do this. I know her father is going to keep abandoning her, and honestly, I'm at my limit. And if I didn't know whether I was wrong or not before, I definitely know I was right at not going. I know I'm going to get a lot of backlash saying that I'm bitter and angry. I understand wanting her dad there, but I should be on the same level of importance as him. I'm still going to be there for her when he inevitably ditches her again, but if this behavior carries on to her next graduation or wedding day, I can't say I'll be that apologetic to her. I should have just listened to Not the Jerk. Not the Jerk. You gave her an important lesson about maintaining relationships with the people who are there for you and not blowing them off for the next new thing that comes along. I fully agree. Daughter treated her horrendously. Daughter might now go no contact, but she would be the jerk to do so given how she's treated her mother. And OP, stop apologizing. You didn't do anything wrong. The more you apologize, the more your daughter believes that she was right in her actions. At best, you can say, look, I understand you're hurt and I'm sorry you're upset, but this is a consequence of your actions. A lot of people here are forgetting that OP tried to ask for her daughter to compromise. OP and the dad could have both gone to the graduation, but of course, dad is trying to form a wedge between them, which seems he has probably been doing for years. OP's daughter is very naive and still has yet to understand that her father is the problem and unfortunately is taking it out on her mother. Crappy situation all around, but sometimes our biggest lessons are learned the hard way. No, I think the father had no interest in going. So father said, I will only go if OP won't be there, assuming there is no chance that OP would honor daughter's wishes and not attend. Then, surprise, OP did as her daughter asked and stepped aside and father was left having to attend a graduation. Graduations are incredibly boring. Even if you adore the person who's graduating, it's a pretty miserable experience. No way the father wanted to attend. Father was just looking to say, B, I would love to be there. If only your mother wouldn't be there. Too bad. You, as a parent, could have handled this better. You could have just went to support her, despite how she hurt you by pulling that crap with her dad. And this is by no means agreeing with what she did. I firmly believe she was the jerk for that, nor diminishing your hurt feelings. That being said, graduating from high school is a pretty big deal. If I was in the same situation and this happened to my kid, I would have been there for her, because if you love your kid, you stand up for them, despite their misguided and ill-advised intentions to capture the love of an absent parent. Had you done that, it would have the desired effect of her seeing that her dad really ain't crap, to where he can't even pull it together to be there for his kid. Despite him not wanting to see you, he should have been able to suck it up for at least a couple of hours as opposed to attempting to ban you from the ceremony. But he didn't. What he did was way worse. He dashed her hopes and let her down again. That act alone was sufficient enough to rip the blinders right off her. And you went right ahead and compounded the issue. Instead of being the best friend and parent that she says you are, you essentially abandoned her too. That was like a punch to the gut and she got a hard dose of reality. Like I said before, I am in no way condoning what she did but what you did could just as easily backfire on you. Not only did her dad ditch her for one of the most important events in her life, but so did her mother, all in an effort to punish her for hurting your feelings. Being a parent means that this happens from time to time. Nobody's perfect, and we all mess up from time to time. If you don't want your feelings hurt, don't have kids, don't get married, etc. If you don't get ahead of this, you will be on the fast track to no contact with your kid. Do you really want that? 
As soon as she's able, she'll try to get away and stay away from you as fast as she can. You need to apologize and make it right. But seeing as she still lives with you, you also need to make this a teachable moment. Acknowledge that you acted out of hurt and anger. Let her know while you could have handled it better, your feelings were no less valid. Remind her of the fact that you were there for her this whole time when her father would make only cameo appearances, and for her to deny you the chance to share in this achievement with her was really painful and unfair to you. Help her to understand that her father has shown a consistent pattern of behavior where she is concerned and is very unlikely to change it. He has shown her over and over again who he is. It's time for her to believe him. Do this without bad-mouthing him. I cannot stress enough how important this is. She needs to draw her own conclusions from this. And last but not least, both of you need to go back to therapy. There's a big umbrella to overcome. But with time and patience, and a helpful outside perspective, you two can see yourself through to the other side of this. Hoping the best for both of you. Everyone sucks here. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or her daughter? Please let us know. Definitely the daughter. I wouldn't have gone to a graduation either. Oh, you mean right now? <laughs> okay. Let me, 25 male, introduce you to the key players in this story. First, we have my dog. She is a service animal and as a result is very well trained. Up next, my annoying and petty neighbors. I live in a small duplex with an even smaller front yard that isn't fenced in. The only thing separating the duplex and the neighbor's house is a very narrow driveway. It's important to note that when I refer to the neighbors, I'm not referring to the residents of the connecting unit of the duplex, but the owner of the house a driveway over. My neighbors have a history of annoying behavior. For starters, they are extremely socially awkward. They watch over us like hawks, have never been able to hold a conversation with us, despite us being friendly and trying, and are some of the most passive-aggressive people on earth. Maybe it's because we're college-aged and they have something against the youth, but for whatever the reason, they have it out for us. The neighbors have called our landlord to tell them that we are partying at all hours of the night. The family, with infants, and the connecting unit, the unit that shares a wall with us, have never once complained. When the landlord asked them about these complaints, they always denied it. For reference, aside from me, none of the other residents of the house even drink. I drink on occasion, once every few months, but never at the house, out of respect for the sober people. The neighbors called the city over the course of several months and got one side of the street turned into a no parking zone because we have four cars in total, one for each person that lives in our unit and have to park on the street. This obstructed their view. As a result, they started parking in front of their house on the legal side of the street. One day while we were gone, they moved their truck from the driveway that has ample parking to the street to block us from parking there. Their truck didn't move for about six months. Anytime my dog goes number two in the yard and it sits for more than a few hours, they call the landlord to report it. Because of my disability, I can't always get to it immediately. My landlord understands this and understands how the neighbors are, so she had stopped saying anything aside from laughing with me about how ridiculous and annoying these people are. This is just a short list of my grievances with our neighbors. I could go on, but by now you get the point. Well, yesterday morning, I let my dog out as per usual. I was in my boxers as I had just rolled out of bed. I'm standing in the doorway where my neighbor's house is blocked from my unit. As my dog is sniffing around in our yard, I look down at my phone. A few seconds later, I hear our neighbor, the wife, shout, No, no, don't do that here. Get out of our yard. Stop that. In a very panicked voice. Turns out, they were all sitting outside. By the time the neighbor had shouted, it was too late to call my dog back over. She was in the process of gifting them a big present. I shout, Hey, I'm sorry about that. I'll come get it. Give me a minute. And I call my dog back inside. Dead silence. About 15 seconds go by. I was on my way to the room to throw some pants on and a shirt when I hear a muffled shout from the husband. Come pick this up right now. I chuckled to myself and shouted, Okay, with a huge grin on my face. I knew what I had to do. I dropped the pants that I had grabbed. I turned right around, picked up a doggy bag by the door, and made my way out of the door and into the view of the husband, who's standing cross-armed near the pile of doggy do with a rude expression and posture, the wife and the daughter. Watching the look of anger turn into shock was satisfying. He was truly speechless, and so was the rest of the family. I'm just happy to have a story that I can finally share on here. I also think the family is Mormon, so that was probably the craziest thing that they've ever seen. Am I the jerk for giving my daughter's pets gifts and offending my son in the process? I mostly use Reddit for the bird watching and animal videos, so apologies if this old lady doesn't quite fit in. 
Unfortunately, when I was younger, birth control was frowned on in many circles, and I ended up having two kids due to the pressure of society and family. I'm so glad the younger generation has more of a choice. John and Amber were very good kids, and I did everything I could for them. Kissed boo-boos, told fairy tales, held them through scary tantrums, helped with homework, made sure they were fed, educated, and protected. But once they moved out, I was just so relieved that it was over. I could finally find out who I was without society frowning at me, expecting me to be someone. Amber and I spent a lot of time together still, and John comes around with his family at least monthly. Their father thankfully passed peacefully, so it's just me and them. On to the issue. John has three kids, my grandbabies. I was never all that interested in being a grandma. I'd hoped to be done with the burden of kids, but I do my best. Amber does not have kids, but she does have a dog and a cat that she loves. I jokingly call them the grand puppies, and though I know it's silly, I get them little gifts on the holidays too. John recently came to me upset because I bought a new cat tree for Amber, who is fostering kittens. He said that I've never done anything like that for his kids and that they could use a new jungle gym in the backyard or new toys too. He became very cross with me and told me I was a terrible grandma and a horrible mom and how it was typical of me to treat cats and dogs better than his kids. He stormed out with his youngest and said he won't come back until I acknowledge how hurtful my behavior is. I talked to his wife and she relayed that John is upset that I don't do all the grandma things you expect, art projects, day trips, sneaking them candy, etc. He thinks I'm cold and unfeeling and have always been. To me, getting a cat tree is more for me to show Amber that I respect who she is and will never push her to be a mother if she doesn't want to be. But to John, I guess it's a sign that I value kitties and puppies more than babies. Am I the jerk? The question of if I ever buy presents for the grandkids has come up a few times, and I want to confirm that yes, I do buy them gifts at appropriate times. They are not left out, but no, I have never gone out to spend a thousand dollars on some random jungle gym. I'm editing this post again because I'm seeing a lot of strange comments that have created a much different story of what has happened. I do not dote on the animals. They get little gifts on the holidays like the grandkids do. I don't have any pets of my own and I've never had them. I've always supported John's lifestyle. I went and stayed with them at their request when the first child was born. I paid for their preschool and they've been sent to my home many times so John and his wife could take a break. In my mind, supporting their actual needs was showing them the most love I could. There is a huge price difference between a cat tree and a jungle gym. He's comparing apples to oranges, not the jerk. Also, I think it's cute that you call them your grand puppies. He's comparing apples to an entire orange tree. A jungle gym is wildly more expensive than a cat tree, and the kids probably get gifts more often and of greater value than the pets. No joke, my mother-in-law just got one for my daughter at almost $800, and that doesn't even include the $1.3,000 landscaping to flatten the surface or $800 worth of rubber mulch to soften a fall. Apples to Orange Grove is more like it. Karen took my cat, but I was set on getting him back. About two months ago, my cat somehow managed to get out of the house. I, 25 female, don't usually let my cat outside, save for letting him play in the back garden, which he can't escape due to how it's laid out. I personally think, because it's been so warm lately, that he got out by squeezing through one of the open windows, which was open by just a tiny crack, but it baffles me how, because a cat wouldn't be able to push it open by itself. I also keep doors closed and I'm very careful most of the time. My husband and I have no idea how it happened as it's never been an issue before. All in all, it was a very emotional time for me and my husband. My cat means everything to me. He's become something of an emotional support animal to me and he's over a year old. I raised him from a tiny stray kitten, waking up around the clock and hand feeding him milk to ensure he'd survive. I thought he wouldn't make it, but he miraculously pulled through and has been my best friend since. In short, I love my cat very much. On to the story. When my cat disappeared, I was besides myself with grief. My husband and I made posters. We contacted pet sanctuaries, pounds, vets, etc. in hopes he had shown up or someone had found him, but no luck. I was beginning to fear the worst. All kinds of scenarios played out in my head and I was finding it hard to sleep. Eventually, a month later, we got a call. It was from a woman who worked in nearby old folks home. I cried with relief as she explained that they had found my baby and asked me to come collect him. When my husband and I got there though, 
we were mortified to see our cat in such a poor state. He had lost weight and his coat was matted. He was afraid to go near us. We knew it was him, but he was so unrecognizable. The worker went on to explain how he had shown up and a resident, an old woman, had kept him hidden in a box under her bed and he was only discovered when another worker began to get suspicious over the smell of cat pee. I fought back tears because not only had my boy gone through that, but also that this sad, lonely woman was desperate for some form of companionship. A part of me felt guilty until the old woman's family showed up. I tried to gently explain that I wanted to take my cat back because he belongs to me and he needs to see a vet, but the family yelled at me, calling me heartless for taking an old woman's only friend away and how they had gotten attached, so the family knew but also kept it a secret from staff. I said I was sorry, but I had bonded with my cat. He's in my name and he needs to come home. They proceed to call me a monster. Thankfully, my cat is doing much better now and has gone back to his old self. But the family has yet to stop harassing me and my husband. I'm reluctant to complain because I don't want to cause the old woman any more grief as she's clearly unwell. Am I the jerk? Info and updates. 1. From what I now know, the old woman actually did let him roam around her room and feed him. But I'm almost certain it wasn't cat food, so we did check in with the vet when we had him looked over and thankfully it didn't seem like it was anything toxic. She had him hid under the bed when it came to routine medicine and room checks. I never did find out how she got him, but I can only assume he wandered off or was tempted by food or caught somehow. 2. The family must have been called when the incident was reported, maybe out of concern, hence why they showed up suddenly. As for how the family managed to harass me, it took me a while before I took down as many of the missing cat posters as I could, but my first priority was making sure my cat was safe. Someone could have taken pictures of the posters on their phones, plus the care home is very local, as in just around the corner from me and I can only assume that families live close by too, as they saw me out buying food a few times and I'm certain they figured out where I live. And huge shout out to TLZ Player 1992 thanks for leaving us the review on iTunes. Hey Mr. Redder, been listening and watching on both YouTube and podcast for years. I'm a huge fan. Thanks for leaving us the review, TLZ. It really helps out the podcast and we can't thank you enough. Come leave us a review on iTunes and we'll read it in a video. Support our channel by joining as a member today and we'll give you a shout out in our next video. Or come watch this video next. You won't believe what Karen does in that one.